Now that we see how the toolbar works and how the properties view works and how basically the curve view works, we're going to pull these tools together and we're going to create a couple of animations with them. And while we do this, what we want to do is focus in on how we can edit our curve, how we can edit the keyframe, how we can create additional keyframes, and what the properties are available for these keyframes. The first thing we want to do, though, is identify when we actually go into animation mode. When you click on the animation mode button, we go into animation mode. We get a little red line inside of the scene. So there's this little change right here. When we go out of this mode, that line disappears. Now, that line is a special little line that we use. This is going to be our keyframe line. Now, we can also get that line by simply clicking on our timeline at the top. If we left click on that timeline, our keyframe line comes in place. We can hover on top of that line in the timeline bar, left click on it, and then scrub left and right to move through the animation and to play out that animation in our scene view up here. Now just as a reminder that when we hover on top of a keyframe in our keyframe line, we can see in the properties view that these are the ones that actually have a keyframe on them. The icon changes from that single dash to the actual diamond. Now keyframes are an important part of this. When you set a keyframe, it, it stores the information about the object. So if it's the position, it's storing the position of the object or the rotation or a color value or any kind of value that you're working with. So how do we actually work with a keyframe? Let's go ahead and just look in our curve view. If you remember, just Alt, right click, or your middle mouse, and your middle mouse to pan around. I'm just going to select on one of these little diamonds right here. This is my keyframe. When I select on it, it highlights it. I can use a selection box to drag out a selection and select multiple keyframes at one time. I can left click on this keyframe and move it inside of the curve view. And as I move it, you'll notice that the box moves as well because right here along the side, this is the actual value. So as I move this up, it increases or decreases that value. I can also step it forward or backward on my timeline and change its position as a keyframe. I can also right click on this key and get additional options for how this key is going to behave. One option is to simply delete the key. I can also set the auto, the free smooth, the flat, and the broken for my keyframe. And I can change the tangent type. For the left side coming in, I can set it to a free, linear, or constant. For the right side going out, the same options, free, linear, and constant. Or I can set both of my tangents at the same time to free, linear, or constant. We'll look at those in a bit more depth when we actually do a couple of animations. If I'm not on a keyframe, I can also just hover on top of my curve, right click, and do add key. It's going to add a keyframe to that location on the curve, and now I have a new keyframe to work with. I can change its value by taking it up or down. I can change its place on the timeline by moving it forwards or backwards. And by changing these positions, I'm also adjusting and changing that curve. If I want to change how that curve comes in or out, it's just a matter of changing the tangent type. So right now we're on auto. We could go to say broken. This is the handles that I work with. So if I want to change out the handles on my tangent, I can do broken, which allows me to work with both handles. We could pinch it and make it bounce if we wanted to do like a ball. We could do free smooth, which keeps us together and keeps a nice smooth curve for us. We can do flat, which flattens it out for us. The flatten option is going to work really great between two keyframes. So if we select one keyframe, we add to that selection, holding shift and making a selection. We'll right click and we'll do flatten. And it flattens it out for us really nice on each one of the keyframes. Now, the way this curve goes in and out from our keyframe, we notice it curves down and it goes over. Depending on how we change this curve, we can adjust it, but we can also change out the tangent on the left or right of it. So if we select on this one, we go tangent left, we can see free, linear, or constant. So we do linear. Linear makes it a nice straight line. So let's say we select this one, and let's do the right tangent. So going out of this one, we'll do linear. So now we've got a nice straight animation from point to point. There's no smooth curve coming in or out of it, it's just a straight line. 
you could continue to adjust that to whatever it is you might need. So we could say with one of these guys, we'll go in and we'll change up our right tangent to, let's say, a constant. And a constant is like a step if you're used to 3D Studio Max or Maya. And we're basically going from this point till it hits this one and it just drops straight down. So you can get a step that just goes nice and hard on each one of them. Um, you can also change these up. Let's do this one from the left tangent. We'll say this one as um, back to our constant here. And we'll set this one as our constant to our left. You can see how we just step that up and down. Now let's say we select on these guys. And we change these out to both tangents. And we'll do free. Now you notice that it remains the way it was. We now have to readjust if we want to get our curve back in place. And we're just setting it back to an auto. And let's go ahead and set this back to our free. And at this point, your best bet is to go in, have that keyframe in there, select on the handles, adjust the t different type of tangent tangents for the left, right, or for the both, whether you're using the free linear or constant, and just play with that a little bit and see how that works for you. And once you set up a certain type of curve, then play through your animation. You can select on your keyframe line, and left click and drag, and just see how the animation plays across that line with those tangents and the handles the way you have them placed. Now, adding additional keyframes to this line are pretty simple. You can simply right click, add a keyframe at whatever point you want to add to. But you can also add keyframes in a different way. You can also set your keyframe line to whatever point you need. And then from your properties view, you can select on your keyframe indicator. And on the keyframe indicator, we can actually add a keyframe from here. So by left clicking here, you can do add a keyframe, and it drops a keyframe in on that curve. And you can add additional things. For instance, with scale, we could come in and say, well, let's scale our objects. The first thing we need to do is actually add a curve to it. So we're going to add a curve. That sets up a curve for each one of the scale. And then we could go in and actually scale our object up. Let's say we move over a few keys, take our scale on our Y and bump that up to, say, 10. And now we can actually animate the scale of our object. We could take our scale back down to 1 and have our object scaling up and down just using the animation view. We've now looked at how we can work with our additional tools together, creating and working with the actual curve in the curve view, and adding and adjusting the actual keyframe inside of the curve view, and working with its handles and its tangents. The next thing we want to do is go to more of, a, of a, a, a bigger animation, something that's got a little more depth to it, and look at how we can actually apply events to an animation and do multiple hierarchical objects and how we animate those kinds of objects. And we'll look at that next.